This video contains spoilers for the Resident Evil series. You have been warned. Somewhere between Resident Evil 6 and Resident Evil 7, the Umbrella Corporation was refounded as a private military contractor. Despite distrusting their motives, the SAA operative Chris Redfield worked with this blue umbrella as a consultant during the Baker House incident to rescue Ethan Winters and neutralise Lucas Baker. Somewhere between Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil Village, Chris started to distrust the BSAA despite having helped found it. He chose to form his own Hound Wolf Squad to deal with Mother Miranda, during which his team discovered that the BSAA were using bioweapons, which appear to be clones of Chris himself, to conduct operations. This confirms that they have completely lost their way. It's not likely we'll see the final outcome of this revelation, Although there is an overarching myth arc to the Resident Evil series, it is one filled with holes and unanswered questions. Players make the story happen when it comes to the bioweapons and stopping the latest outbreak, but human antagonists who don't turn themselves into big goopy monsters, or get skewered by them, are almost universally defeated off screen. Even the mighty Umbrella Corporation, ostensibly the focus of Resident Evil Zero through Code Veronica, spends that time being continually, passively betrayed by Wesker, Birkin and Nikolai, before its final demise in a line of Leon's opening monologue for RE4. This in itself might be something I talk about in depth in another video, but here, it serves as a useful way to discuss how Capcom might bring back the best characters that the series has produced, and finally do right by them. I'm talking, of course, about Claire Redfield and Jill Valentine. Chris is at this point the undisputed main character of the series. Not only has he starred in the most games, but he's also been there at the key moments, from the mansion incident to the destruction of Umbrella's remaining facilities on Rockford Island and Antarctica, to the death of Wesker, as well as being a guiding hand in Ethan's story and the training of his daughter. I'm a big fan of Chris, and he bookends my favourite chapter of the franchise with RE1 and Code Veronica. But Claire and Jill were there too, and in the aftermath they've been sidelined in a way that they didn't deserve. From RE Revelations 2 and the animated films, we know that Claire is part of the human rights organization TerraSafe. Because Ter doesn't have to end with a wrist. But Hair and their role hasn't extended into the central canon of the mainland games, almost making you feel as though she's been relegated to side missions. Jill, meanwhile, disappeared after RE5, apparently undergoing tests by the BSAA and corresponding with Barry Burton about how bored she was as a result. Which is where the opportunity arises to bring Jill and Claire back into the mainline story. For that matter, it's also an opportunity for Capcom to do more with Chevra Alamar and Barry, even as background characters. Jill is undergoing tests at the BSAA, whom Chevra and Barry both work for. It seems unfeasible that they would be unaware, even peripherally, of Chris working with Blue Umbrella, and then distancing himself from the BSAA to go it alone. There are a couple of possibilities here. If Chris kept them in the loop, asking them to be his eyes and ears in the BSAA, then they could have helped him uncover the organization's corruption. This may well have been on their radar a long time, since the collapse of Tricell after RE5. After all, a major BSAA stakeholder's leader working with Wesker to end the world is pretty compelling evidence that the organization needs reform. In turn, this could mean that they remain sleeper agents for Chris within the BSAA, perhaps being watched closely by the higher-ups. Alternatively, they could have been found out and either be captured or on the run, having to go dark. Perhaps a mix of both, with Jill escaped and Chevron and Barry detained. Alternatively, if Chris took the same attitude with them as Ethan, wrong-headedly believing that keeping his cards close to his chest kept everyone safer, then they could face a different peril. They could still be detained in this scenario, but more interesting would be if the BSAA's spin on events painted Chris as the bad guy, and they had to face up to the possibility of taking on their former partner, creating some interesting conflict. Chris and I go back a long way. If the BSAA had cloned Chris for their bioweapons, it's also not beyond the bounds of possibility to have Jill, Chevra, or Barry clones out there as well. Meanwhile, Claire's role at TerraSave has always revolved around not just fighting the threat of bioterrorism, but uncovering the corruption connected to it. It's not difficult to see how this would bring her into conflict with the BSAA, and give her a role to play in this fight. There's even a potential for collision with Chris, despite her recognising the wrongness of the BSAA's actions. Rose Winters is herself a bioweapon, 
born of two parents who had been infected by the mold, and yet also a living human being. The moral conundrums this raises are obvious, whilst Claire would see clear parallels between Chris training and controlling her for combat, as implied by the post credit scene of Village, and the way Sherry Birkin could only earn her freedom by agreeing to be an agent of the US government. There are a lot of threads to pull together here, potentially making a more complex plot than any of the Resident Evil series has put forward previously, but if they could be utilised effectively, then it would serve multiple purposes. Capcom would be bringing back series favourites it has been accused of neglecting. It would strengthen the story, so that Resident Evil wasn't creating plot holes for itself by ignoring its own canon. A game built around this could be told through multiple campaign scenarios, one of the most popular elements of Resident Evil 2 that's only really been repeated by Resident Evil 6. It offers the possibility for a through line of sequels with a strong central plot arc. Sadly, it seems far more likely that the BSAA's demise will happen off screen, with Jill, Claire and others still AWOL, and Chris will continue to operate in the background to anchor a rose-centred RE9 to the rest of the series in the loosest possible fashion. That game can still be highly engaging and fun to play, and even have a serviceable plot, but it would be a shame if Capcom chose to go that route and continue ignoring so much of their own canon. If you have a different idea for how future Resident Evil installments can bring it back Claire and Jill, or even if you don't want that and have different ideas for the story, then let me know in the comments. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and be sure to subscribe for more regular Resident Evil content. I'll be streaming Chris's campaign on the Resident Evil Remake on Friday, so be sure to stop by and check it out. See you next time. You want stars? I'll give you stars.